From character rosters to classes, picking a main that you're going to invest possibly hundreds of hours into is a daunting and exciting process. Often, players use archetypes to help filter through the pool of options to find exactly the right fit for them. In this video, which is part of a larger series of jungle tutorials and explanations, we're going to be going through the primary archetypes of junglers in League of Legends. This is simple at first thought, but when taken into consideration that players throughout League's long lifespan have conflicting theories about the game... No, I'm not... Uh, I'm not belittling LS here or attacking him at all, but I feel like he makes so many controversial claims that 99% of them are wrong, but then one of them is right, and then he over overhypes the fact that he's right. Ah, It becomes more complex. I, however, am your savior, and have brought a definitive list that takes into consideration all perspectives, from Korean to Viking. The three main jungle archetypes are Carnivore, Herbivore, and Omnivore. This shouldn't surprise anyone when we're talking about champions that spend more time surrounded by trees than teammates. If the way you cope with depression and a troubled childhood is by transferring that sadness and pain onto others, then you might be the perfect fit for a Carnivore jungler. A carnivore jungler uses their powerful early game by constantly invading and ganking to facilitate their win condition of creating early pressure on the map and leads for them and their lanes to snowball. Often, they have tools that allow this, such as being able to gank at level 2 or having incredibly strong dueling potential early game, forcing the enemy jungle to path away from you. A carnivore jungler must use this powerful early game to get kills and convert them into early objectives, and their kits make them very good at doing it. Carnivore junglers are also the junglers greatest at harvesting that delicious salt from the enemy due to their oppressive nature and can end games incredibly early by assassinating the enemy's will to play. It's no surprise then that these junglers are so popular in Korea, a region known for their weak mentals. Due to the open mid frequencies, champions that dominate the early game are extremely popular in Korea. If you can take a champion that has a dominant early game and win lane, you can effectively break the spirits of the enemy team and yeah. create an open situation True. early on. True, this Most is what I, of your this games is what I are to. going to be decided. Oh, oh, but that's so broken. How can how can I possibly play against that? Some of you may be asking. Carnival junglers do have weaknesses. Most of their gold income is heavily reliant on getting kills early game. You can use well-timed counter ganks, smart laning, and deep wards to stop this and ruin their economy. Carnival junglers are also pressured to make plays happen, and they can't just sit back in AFK farm. If they have no impact early game, then they risk wasting the strength of their kits and have way less of an impact on the state of the game as it goes into the mid and late game. Carnival junglers must understand what lanes to snowball in order to create leads, and use their overwhelming early presence to get ahead and dominate the map and its objectives. Prominent carnival junglers include Warwick, Karzix, and Elise. Warwick has incredible healing of his Q and passive early game. This means his skirmishing is very good, as well as having incredible stickiness with his Q chase and E fear. Like most carnival junglers, however, if his early game movement is tracked, and his ganks are stopped, he can easily fall way behind and get outscaled. Karzix has the ability to take over early game. He beats nearly every other jungle in one-on-one -on -one skirmishes when using his burst isolation damage to its full potential. He can take control of games relying only on himself with an early lead, which makes him a great carnival jungler to pick up to main for solo queue. Elise is the epitome of a carnival jungler, with one of the best level 3 power spikes in the game. She is extremely feast of famine, and has one of the strongest early games at the cost of falling off very hard late game. A good Elise player ensures to take full advantage of her tower dive setups with repel. This can be a great method to tilt the enemy and end games before minute 10. Here is my interpretation of every single carnival jungler in League of Legends. Please feel free to pause the video or take a screenshot.
If you find the idea of amplifying your teammate's strength rather than hogging the spotlight for yourself appealing, you might be a bit... You might be a herbivore or control jungler. A herbivore jungler uses the impressive CC and peel from their kits to create leads through fighting with number advantage and carrying late game teamfights. They are some of the best gankers in the game, however they struggle and in some cases CANNOT duel or skirmish. As a herbivore jungler, your game plan is to play for heal with number advantage and avoid one on one fights or ganks at all costs, which in some cases includes farming for the level 6 power spike. They then use their insane peel and CC to carry team fights over objectives. A farming jungler can offer a supportive playstyle that can bring out the best of your teammates. That's not to say though that they're limited to relying on teammates, as they really do absolutely dominate late game team fights and have the ability to carry with their peel and CC. These junglers are really effective when playing with hyper carries, like Yasuo, Yone, Jax, Asphelios or Katarina, due to the peel they provide and can absolutely snowball the game out of control by playing for these lanes. Some prominent herbivore junglers are Zac, Ivan and Nunu. Zac offers some of the best ganking in the game with his E giving limitless angles to engage with. He offers insane CC with his Q, E and R, all being hard CC on multiple targets, which allows a huge advantage in a 2v2 or more situation. He also has crazy sustain on his passive and W, as well as a revive mechanic enabling easy tower dives. Ivan is an oppressive early game ganker who rewards good pathing and decision making. His shield and root are amazing tools for peeling during a gank or skirmishing around objectives. His ultimate daisy can create fights with number advantage at will, and so it allows Ivan to be at his full potential more consistently than other herbivore junglers. Ivan does get outscaled late game by most champs however. In these cases, he transitions to a purely support role and plays for peeling carries and team fights and making picks with his root. Nunu is cancer. He also offers some of the best level 2 ganks in the game and has incredibly broken peel with his E passive. He also has amazing objective control due to his Devour plus Smite setup. As the game progresses to late game, he can look to make picks with his snowball and control areas of teamfights with his R. Here's my interpretation of every single herbivore jungler in League of Legends. Feel free to pause the video or screenshot to take a look at it. If you are cool, sexy, and have intercourse with a mad amount of humans that you find attractive, you're most likely an omnivore jungler. Omnivore junglers play games to scale and hit their insane mid and late game power spikes. Due to the strength of the power spikes, they suffer a much weaker early game than both carnivore and herbivore junglers. The game plan for omnivore junglers is to keep up with the enemy jungle, hit your power spike as fast as possible, and use this power spike to carry the game to a win. Most Omnivore junglers rely on level 3 or 6 to be able to gank to their full potential. Examples include Echo, who has no real gank potential until level 3, while gaining insane gank potential at level 6, and Evelyn, who at level 6 gains her invisibility passive and ultimate. A good Omnivore tracks the enemy jungler, and uses counter ganks, counter jungling, and objective focus in order to make up for their weak early game. This means as an omnivore, you'll have a huge advantage if you secure an early dragon. The enemy junglers know this too however, and the higher you climb, the more you'll get used to giving up the first two dragons and fighting for the third when you're at your power spike. I have loads more to say on omnivore junglers in particular, as I one trick one of them. If you want me to go into more depth in another video, please let me know in the comments below. Omnivore junglers are probably the hardest jungle type to learn, as they require you to outthink your opponent to win games. This also makes them the most rewarding to learn in my opinion, as their scaling means they can usually 1v9 at mid to late game and carry by themselves. As mentioned before, Echo and Evelyn are two prominent omnivore junglers. Echo, on top of being the coolest champion in the game, is an assassin that scales extremely well at the expense of a very vulnerable early game. He has a huge burst, easy tower dive setups with his time reversing ultimate and good mobility with his E. His main weakness is that the only CC in his kit is his W which is hard to land and has a steep learning curve. 
An Echo player that takes time to learn how to use the W can make the champion seem completely unbalanced, however. I have so much more to say, and I plan on making an extremely detailed Echo Guide at some point in the near future, so please keep an eye out for it. Evelyn is a hyper carry that uses her insane level 6 power spike to take over games. Most Evelyns adopt a farming jungle playstyle that looks to clear the jungle as fast as possible in order to hit their power spike as fast as possible. This puts heavy emphasis on clearing all 6 of your camps before Scuttlecrab spawns at 315 and is something I highly recommend practicing in the practice tour often. A key detail about Evelyn is that her invisibility provides pressure globally on every lane until the point she shows up, which is why she feels so oppressive to play against. This is a list of every single Omnivore jungler in the game according to me. Feel free again to take a screenshot or pause the video to take a closer look. To summarize, understanding the three archetypes of junglers in League of Legends is a crucial fundamental to grasp. You'll notice that when certain champions in an archetype have none of the weaknesses I've talked about, it means they're overtuned. You see examples of this during the Scuttlecrab meta last season, where Uda and Hecarim suffered from none of the weaknesses that their relative archetype is meant to. It's important to recognize that archetypes are tools that help you visualize optimal playstyles, but they are also not laws. League is a game that evolves constantly and lets you define your own set of rules, as LS showed in this season's LCS. Being Victor a lot shakier. Oh my god. I'm curious That's a lot of Ivern. Be here. Wait, this could be, remember, this could be Ivern jungle or it could be Ivern top playing like a Janna as well. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Please support my content by subscribing to the YouTube and following me on Twitch. Panda out.